Hi, this is Ian Kilborn at St. Lawrence College, Kingston, Ontario, Energy Systems Engineering Technology Program. We are uh, doing a video today on uh, RET screen for solar hot water. And uh, we'll just do a residential building to start with. So here's the opening screen for RET screen. And going to choose uh, not energy efficient measures, but uh, we're going to choose uh, from the drop down here. Uh, we will choose heating. And in the next drop down, we'll choose solar water heating. And I'm going to choose method two here uh, because I want to do some financial analysis. You can see down here at the bottom. Uh, there's only three worksheets showing right now. Uh, when I switch to method two, it jumps up and we get uh, much more. We get emission analysis and financial analysis and risk analysis. And uh, here's where we would choose the climate data location. I'm not going to bother changing that, but that's where we would do it. So we come in here to the energy model worksheet. And we're going to choose a hot water system up at the top here. Now under load type, uh, if I click on here again I get a drop down. Um, up at the top we'll choose a house as our load type for residential problem. And uh, now red screen will suggest if you wish how uh, much hot water this house is going to use. If you know how much it's much better to enter it directly. Uh, we'll uh, pretend there are three occupants in this house. Uh, they live there 100% of the time. Um, that doesn't mean that they never leave the house. Um, it just means that uh, it's going to choose loads uh, appropriate to people who uh, live and sleep in that house every day. And uh, I'll just tab through that. And uh, now Red Screen is suggesting 180 liters per day as a uh, as a typical use for three people. Now, because that's in white, it's just a suggestion. If you want to actually use it in uh, the analysis, you need to enter it yourself um, down here in the yellow boxes. And we're going to make base case and proposed case the same. And 55 will be my delivery temperature. And we operate seven days per week. This box down here says formula, supply temperature method. Uh, that means that uh, the supply temperature is the temperature of the incoming water from the street or from the well in the case of a rural house. Uh, the water temperature coming in will change according to uh, how cold the ground is and the season of the year. And so if we l leave that set as formula, Red Screen is going to use its weather data uh, for the location we've selected to determine what the incoming water temperature is month by month. Uh, if you're doing some specialized uh, type of water heating for an industrial process or something and you knew the incoming water temperature, um, then you would not use formula. You would enter it directly. Formula is the best way uh, f if you're bringing in water uh, from a domestic supply. Uh, this box here is, uh, there's a place to enter costs of our system. Um, there's an entire worksheet down here on cost analysis. Um, if you want to have a detailed breakdown of costs, including annual costs for maintenance, um, avoided annual costs for maintenance. If your system has less maintenance costs than what it's replacing, um, you can do all of that. Um, if you just want a simple um, upfront, how much does this system cost, uh, you can enter it here. So I'm going to enter $5,000 as my uh, system cost. Here we are being asked for uh, whether our system is tracking or sloped. Well, tracking hot water is pretty rare, so it's going to be fixed. Uh, the slope, um, I will say at 45 degrees. Um, if you leave the azimuth at zero, that means that it is facing south. Um, azimuth off of zero is either east or west of south, the direction that the array is facing. 
Um, now we can come down here and uh, select the type of collectors we're going to use. Um, unglazed would be typically used for a swimming pool application. So we can go into uh, glazed or evacuated tubes. Um, I'll choose glazed uh, just for this example. Uh, once that settles in, then we can go over here to the product database uh, and we can choose a glazed collector from the product database. So there I've chosen a Solcan uh, model 2100. This is uh, roughly 4 feet by 8 feet flat plate collector. Red screen now suggests with this number here how many collectors um, we ought to choose. I'm going to pick two instead of one. Now we have two different places to enter losses. Uh, one here for losses associated with the collector and one here for losses associated with the balance of the system. I'm going to put in 5% as losses for the balance of the system. This would be heat lost through the piping typically that uh, is insulated but maybe not perfectly insulated so we do have uh, a slight heat loss uh, between our piping and when we harvest that heat. Uh, we are going to have a heat exchanger in this system in my example, so I'll choose yes for the heat exchanger. And I will put 80% efficiency for the heat exchanger. Um, the heat exchanger efficiency um, has to do with how well the heat transfers from one fluid to the next. Uh, it does not represent a energy loss particularly if the heat does not transfer perfectly from one fluid to the next, it stays in the, the uh, glycol, for instance, uh, and just does another trip around through the collector. So it affects the overall energy harvest, but uh, it doesn't mean that it's 80% efficient and 20% goes to waste. Our storage capacity is expressed as uh, liters per square meter of collector. Uh, a little bit awkward for small systems. Um, usually we know how many liters our storage tank is going to be. Um, so for instance uh, a 200 liter tank is pretty typical and so if I choose 35 liters per meter squared um, with a two collector system based on these areas up here um, then it turns out to be uh, 200. Uh, you can calculate what this number should be um, using your area uh, because it's solar capacity divided by solar collector area. Uh, or you can guess at it until you get the uh, number here that you're looking for uh, for the storage tank that you're, uh, you're thinking of using. Uh, again, we have, uh, rather than entering the watts of the pump directly, we have watts per square meter of collector. I know my pump is going to be something like 40 watts uh, on a system like this. I'll enter 18 watts as a uh, per meter squared as my pump power. Electricity rate this is the price that we uh, pay for electricity. Uh, the pump uses electricity and so RetScreen will charge that cost um, against the cost of the project. I'll enter 15 cents a kilowatt hour. Now down here under heating system this is where we model the existing heating system. Uh, in other words what we're going to be offsetting by adding our solar I'm going to model uh, a propane system here and I can choose what units I want to uh, price my propane in 
Now the base case and the proposed case are the same here because we're not planning on changing our fuel fired system. Most uh, atmospheric vent tanks, tank type heaters are not particularly efficient. I'm putting in 55 for my efficiency here. Fuel rate is the dollars per liter. I'll put in 70 cents a liter there. Um, and now if we've filled in all the blanks, uh, we'll start to get some numbers appearing. Uh, first of all, back up here at the top, uh, we will get a number for heating. Uh, 3.8 megawatt hours. It's the same in the proposed case and the base case. This means how much heat is required to actually make this amount of hot water, regardless of what the source is uh, and regardless of the efficiency of the fuel and all that stuff. Um, it's just over the course of a year, how much heat did it take uh, to make 180 liters of water a day, month in, month out. So 3.8 megawatt hours is the answer there. Um, as we come down here, we can see how much did the uh, solar system deliver. Well, heating delivered here was 2.4 megawatt hours of uh, heat delivered. And so 2.4 as a ratio with the total up here of 3.8 um, comes out to be 64%. So our solar fraction in this case is 64%, uh, probably a little bit uh, higher than uh, we would normally do. One of the ways of sizing a solar hot water system is to uh, look just at the summer and uh, make sure that your collectors don't uh, exceed the water needs in the summertime. Now you may have some overheating problems. Um, typically that ends up with a solar fraction less than 64% uh, for our climate anyway here in Kingston, Ontario, Canada. Um, that's why Redscreen was suggesting uh, two collect one collector instead of two. Um, I put in two and it's oversized it a little bit, but that's okay. Um, we'll just uh, keep on going. So between base case and proposed case, RetScreen will always put the renewable energy system automatically into proposed case. Uh, you don't have to tell it to put it in proposed case. It just assumes that you're modeling renewable energy as a proposed case. So in this situation here then you can see that we have um, fuel consumption is less in the proposed case than it is in the base case and fuel cost is also less in the proposed case than the base case um, all in this ratio of 64 percent because our solar is providing 64 uh, percent of our water heating over the course of a year. If I go to the cost analysis sheet um, I'm just going to see that five thousand dollars that I entered um, on the first page um, in there and I don't need to change anything on there. Um, I'm going to go to financial analysis now. Um, if we look at a fuel cost escalation rate, that's something we can enter here. Uh, this is the percentage um, every year that we think our conventional fuel is going to increase in price. Uh, most fuels including electricity we assume um, over the life of the project are going to gradually increase in price year by year. Uh, this gives us a chance to enter that. So if I say, for instance, that I think my propane is going to go up by 3.5% a year, um, I can enter that there. Uh, <coughs> Dis inflation rate and discount rate I'm not going to use in this example. Uh, discount rate is the rate that uh, would go in there if you were borrowing money and uh, if you enter a rate there then it gets you get some new boxes um, about borrowing money. Um, I'm going to assume the life of my project here is 20 years and uh, financial incentives and grants um, you could just reduce the purchase price or you could enter those here um, if there were any. If we were borrowing money uh, if we borrowed 40 percent of the money for this project we would enter 40 percent here um, and then, as I said, you would have uh, some other boxes to enter. Uh, so that's enough uh, right there to uh, to get us going with some financials. Um, I'll just scroll down here, and uh, this is the cumulative cash flows graph. 
And so we start off with a negative cash flow of $5,000. Um, and then every year our net cash position uh, improves uh, until here, just a little bit past year 10. Uh, that's our break-even point. So uh, at that point we've saved $5,000. And then um, every year after that um, our savings put us into positive territory. Uh, we can read the exact numbers uh, that this graph is showing us uh, from up here. So our uh, payback happens at year 10.4, our equity payback. Uh, simple payback is longer because that uh, assumes no fuel cost escalation. Um, so equity payback happens at 10.4 years. Uh, the return on investment is 8.5%. Uh, in simple terms, what that means, IRR, internal rate of return, this means that uh, th if you invest this $5,000 in your solar hot water system, at the end of 20 years, you would be in a financial sis situation um, exactly the same as somebody else who took their money uh, and put it in the bank and made 8.5% on it every year. So at the end of 20 years, you would have $5,000 uh, you would have your $5,000 back um, at the 10.2 uh, year mark um, and after that you begin to accumulate extra money on top of your 5000 So the cumulative cash flow graph shows that we'll have 6540 uh, at the end of 20 years uh, but that's in addition to the 5000 uh, that we got back um, by year 10.2. Uh, year so uh, the total value of our investment uh, at the end of 20 years in terms of uh, cash value would be uh, 6 and 5 is $11,540 uh, and that would compare with the person who put their money in the bank at 8.5% uh, uh, put their $5,000 in the bank at 8.5% it's a little more complicated than that but that's a uh, a good level of basic understanding of what uh, rate of return really means.